Hi there, my name is John Lauer, and I am going to take you on a walkthrough of uh, this little project I whipped up called Chili Pepper Hardware Fiddle. Uh, it is a, um, it's an application that really was born out of uh, necessity, sort of necessity is the mother of invention. Uh, I've got uh, a Shape Oco with a Tiny G uh, CNC controller and I was somewhat desperate to get some better CNC software. And uh, it kind of led to dabbling with writing some little JavaScript widgets in JS Fiddle. Uh, and then kind of one thing led to the next to the next. And before you knew it, I had uh, an, entire, um, an entire CNC G-code sender that anybody can extend. Uh, I did it specifically so I could extend it and do some fan fancier capabilities than what I found in some of the, the standard software out there. And, uh, and so this is sort of the result of that. Um, there is, I'll, I'll kind of walk you through it. The first thing that um, you'll notice when you get here is, I'm gonna disconnect from the serial port, is that you've got to get your serial port server running. And uh, I'm gonna take you to the other workspace uh, just for the serial port, just to kind of give you an idea on how that works because it what's what's worth noting is that these widgets on this workspace are the same widgets that are on the tiny G workspace but this kind of gives you a, a full rundown so I'm gonna disconnect and I'm gonna go ahead and actually um, you know find the operating system that I'm using uh, we will eventually get some OSX binaries uh, up here but for now I'm on a Windows 64-bit uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and open that and uh, I'm going to extract. Let's just get that extracted. And then all you've got to do is run it. So double click it. Yeah, it's telling you that you've got to run it anyway. Um, that exited because I actually think I'm already running an instance of it. So let's go make sure that is shut down. And then we'll go ahead and launch the one I just downloaded. Um, but let's extract again. And so what this this um, little native app is written in Golang, uh, and it is it, this was an important part to, to get going because you've got to be able to speak to, natively to your uh, serial port uh, from the browser. And so what this app does is it actually uh, publishes a WebSocket. So notice I've got to uh, make sure I don't have my firewall turned on so that that's running and it's version 1.2. It's running in localhost port 8989. Um, and so now that that's running, I can go back to my browser. And frankly, I could, I'm just going to hit reload just to kind of show you what it's like from scratch. Uh, it, it looks to your local host. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's actually reconnecting to the other box I had. But I'm going to go down here and I'm just going to scan my local subnet and notice I've got a couple running. So that's my laptop that I'm recording the screen off of. Notice it says no serial ports found uh, on your serial port JSON server. So it, it, at least it's running and you can kind of see the output of it um, back in this window. But for the sake of this demo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect and I'm going to go back down to the scan and I'm going to connect to uh, a remote machine I have. This is actually an older Windows Vista machine that actually has my Tiny G connected to it. Um, just as a quick uh, example that this is the tiny G so if I went ahead and, and did the question mark here uh, I'd get back the position for the tiny G but if instead if I connected to my Arduino uh, this is uh, some different commands uh, coming back from the Arduino uh, it's just a little app I wrote uh, that's a, a different project um, that you know shows you other stuff so just to give you an idea if I uh, say one for on and F for frequency I gotta go to channel one uh, I'm getting back sort of positioning data. So just an example of other stuff you can do. Okay, so let's go back to the Tiny G workspace and actually get some uh, mis uh, some CNC machining going here. Um, so I'm reloading. Notice that it's uh, reconnected to the other um, port I had connected to previously. The green means that that's the default port that all the other widgets are sending and receiving to. So just make sure that you don't do something like connect it to your Arduino and think that because those check boxes are both checked that you're good to go. It's it's actually the last one that you opened that becomes the default. And that's really what this single port mode means. 
and the single port over here, it means that these widgets um, are not having you choose which port to speak to. Uh, they're just using, um, they're just sending their data blindly over to this serial port widget to be redirected. Uh, so the green bar is just really important. Okay, so let me take you through uh, some of the pieces. Now, you know, you'll notice that I've got this 3D viewer in the middle, and it's definitely really fun. It's using WebGL. Uh, it's uh, I'm, I'm using my trackpad here right now, but because I'm on a touchscreen laptop, I'm also uh, showing you that I'm just actually touching the screen with my finger. That's one finger, and then here I'm doing the pinch and zoom with the two fingers. Uh, and I also can do three fingers to drag it around, so it's really... Uh, it's pretty slick on my laptop. It's it's pretty buttery smooth. Um, so I'm really impressed with this WebGL capability. Uh, it's using the 3JS library underneath. And then just some of these um, these little pieces. This means look at the tool head or don't look at the tool head. So let me go ahead and run the simulation uh, and I can speed it up. And notice how it's following the tool head. I'm going to zoom way in uh, as it's running. Uh, and then if I don't want it to follow the tool head, instead, this is maybe more the traditional way that you've seen um, other CNC uh, 3D viewers run. So that's fine too. You know, there's just a couple different options. I actually kind of prefer the, uh, the tool head view. And then you can always jump back to the extents view in case you kind of get lost. You know, sometimes I get, you know, so flipped around, I have no idea where I'm at, that I just go ahead and hit the... Uh, hit that again to, to kind of get back to it. So that's the simulator. Uh, there's not much in, in that menu uh, necessarily. Uh, this menu right here is really the main um, toolbar for the workspace itself. And that's just to uh, make sure you know you can drag and drop some files. This is actually pretty fun. Um, this is using ZipWhip texting. So I, I'm actually the CEO of ZipWhip. It's a tech startup here in Seattle. And we do cloud texting, so of course I had to embed some of my uh, companies. You know, this is my day job. This is the main thing I do. Chili Peppers is just sort of a fun little weekend project um, that I that I worked on uh, on a few weekends here to kind of pull this together. Uh, but you can definitely get yourself a text message. In fact, uh, I could send one right now to myself uh, when the job is actually done running. Uh, it's a pretty fun feature. Uh, let me walk you through the G code sender. But what I want to do is show you a few examples of some different files, just to run the uh, the G. Well, really to run a 3D viewer through its paces, but also to uh, here we go. So something really simple. It's only 42 lines. Um, let's go get something a little bit a little bit more fun. A uh, little alien face here. Um, those are pretty simple. This is this is actually something I did at a, at a cam bam to um, to cut some acrylic out. So that's that's pretty good. Notice the the light blue, by the way, is uh, it are arc commands. The regular blue, so the darker blue. So these are arc commands being rendered. And then the the dark blue are the straight lines, uh, you know the the sort of the G1 commands. Uh, let's try some other stuff. There's there's some other ones that are really complicated. I mean, some of you are probably familiar with this one. Uh, if you're using your shape, Oko. Let's get the real. This is one of the most complicated ones that I've seen out there. It's just actually a three and a half meg uh, Lego. It's a little bit slower to open. Let's go ahead and get a little simulation run going. And I'm going to zoom way in. Oh, i got to look at the tool head. So we're following the tool head. But notice the uh, you know, the detail in this one. This is when the, looking at the tool head can get a little bit, a little bit outlandish. But I mean, there's a lot. This 3D viewer is just really pretty good. And it's, it's pretty fast. Um, you'll also notice then, like with this Lego uh, file, it's loaded over here in the G-Code uh, viewer and sender. And I've got some of these nice little uh, overlays to help educate you. I know when I started out playing around with G-Code, I had no idea what any of these commands were. So I would have loved for my uh, tool 
to uh, my, you know, my G code center to help educate me as to uh, what, what was going on there. You'll notice too that it's showing one through 200. That does mean that it's only showing a subset. When you've got 205,000 lines, that's a little overwhelming for the browser. So you can kind of do the infinite scroll thing where it's, it's kind of doing it on its own. There's also this extra scroll bar here. This is scrolls right to the top and then scrolls right to the bottom. It's more of a direct select, and this just kind of you know picks somewhere percentage-wise in the middle. So that is what those are for if they're a little confusing. Uh, but you can also just sit here and let it scroll forever too. I think that to let it scroll all the way back to the top would take quite a while. You can also uh, adjust the feed rate. Uh, you can do this initially or even on the fly. You'll notice it highlights it in blue, and if you mouse over, it shows the original. Um, do that while the job is running to send, uh, you know, to adjust the feed rate uh, to kind of speed up or slow down your your milling process. Um, so I'm going to walk you through some other pieces too, but I might as well get going here with actually sending the job. The only thing probably worth doing before I send the job, first of all, I'm, I'm not going to send that Lego job. I'm going to uh, send this original chili pepper. Uh, shape, but I'm going to show you some of the jogging controls. So all all you do to jog is you click over on the jog button, or you can even click over here, and then you click back off of it to to drop the focus. But notice these shortcut keys. Uh, we've got left, um, right, up, down. Um, I'm probably going to tweak these a little bit, but for now I'm going to hold down Control and Shift to move it. So notice I'm at negative 23.361, and I'm going to hit the arrow left once and now I'm at negative 24 so that's it's kind of a quicker way to run I'm just gonna hold it down now and uh, we're just kind of moving right across the screen there it's kind of maybe get it close back to like a, a zero zero position um, notice the planner buffer uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that as I get the the job running either way you get the idea in the jogging uh, of course, you can hit these buttons too, uh, but the keyboard's way more fun. So let's go ahead and and send the uh, the G code. Now, what I gotta do is make sure I'm on serial port. You can also just send the commands to the 3D viewer instead, um, but I want to actually send it to the serial port. So let's go ahead and then hit send. It starts from the beginning, and as you can see in the C and C view, uh, or in the yeah in the view of the shape Oco starting to run the job. Now you'll notice that the tool head follows along as the job runs. It also throws the comments up on the screen. The data coming back from the Tiny G is pretty extensive in the serial port console and all of this data is getting interpreted and translated back to these other widgets. The planner buffer is a pretty important part of the flow control for the Tiny G and the goal here is to monitor the planner buffer and if it ever gets into the red zone you'll notice that this little clock see it just went yellow and the little clock over here go yellow and what that means is to stop sending commands to the tiny g to let it uh, work through the planner buffer you want to balance between not sending too little where you're starving the planner and where you're not sending too much where it actually dips you'll notice I try to not go below 12, that's the threshold, but there's a little bit of just this feedback loop of uh, getting information back from the tiny G quick enough to slow it down. Uh, I've also noticed that when you're sending uh, G2 or G3 commands, it chews up four planner buffer uh, locations, even though it was just one command. So you may have to play around with how much this uh, this widget right here when it decides to send the pause command to these other widgets. Okay, so I want to kind of describe some of the other stuff going on too. By the way, of course, I could zoom way in to follow this, uh, especially if you're doing some detail work. That's pretty helpful. Um, I can increase the feed rate while we're going. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and do that and just kind of speed up the whole thing. Not a lot. We'll just go like one and a half. You could too, by the way, when you're running the program, you can click these and jump to different parts of the um, 3D. Obviously, it gets updated so quick that it's jumping back to the position being reported by the tiny G. So probably not a good time to show that example. 
Um, what we can do as well while it's running, although I'm not going to do it, but I can hit the uh, sort of the emergency stop button. What it does is it is it jumps ahead of all of uh, the the planner buffer commands, and this sort of immediately responds. It's actually sending an exclamation point command to the tiny g, and then this, of course, would let you resume, and this resets the uh, the buffer. So you uh, you may find that you need that emergency stop every now and then while it's running. So we're getting into some of the complicated parts of the job. Uh, let's kind of get this more in view. Uh, what I will show you here is these blue lines are the G2 commands getting rendered. Um, those those are like, I had to sub-render the lines to get those to come out truly as curved and sort of mimic what the um, the tiny G will do. But you'll notice there's some gray lines that follow them. It, it, it's more obvious when you're in some, uh, some curves that are more exacerbated than the ones that we're in. Let me, let me actually just click back to view extents because... And we're almost done running the job. I will get my text message, by the way, when that uh, that job's done running. And boom, just finished. So took about three minutes, 48 seconds. There is no estimator yet for how long your job will run. Um, that's uh, a work in progress. And look at that. I just got my text message that the, the project was done. So a couple other things then just before I sign off is... Um, if you let's jump back to the beginning you can uh, you can do some fun stuff like just clicking around I'm gonna zoom in to kind of show you what it's doing it uh, it jumps to the to the location and then it traces where your next move would be so if we go here I should probably slow this down because I'm on a times 10 let's do that so we're here and then that would be the next move, next move. So it's pretty cool to kind of follow along with what your path will be if you're trying to debug something. Um, the uh, the other stuff I'm going to get more into some of the other uh, videos is uh, the pub sub and the forking, because one of the cooler things, uh, one of the cooler coolest things I would say about this is that you can fork any of this. So for instance, I can go and fork the axes widget and it takes us to JS fiddle and the axes widget is actually running as a standalone item right there or I could go and fork the tiny G widget and that is a standalone widget on its own as well so everything is a standalone widget in fact if you fork the workspace you'll see that it's actually loading an entire instance of that workspace right inside of JS fiddle um, so we'll, we'll dive more into it, but the power of being able to extend this is pretty incredible. And the only f sort of final example I would give you off of extending it is that I took the tiny G workspace and I extended it to a laser version of the workspace where I could, uh, generate G code for laser pulses. And, uh, I don't really have that G code handy necessarily, otherwise I'd show you, but um, just notice there's this new little widget added, and otherwise it's just the same uh, workspace. So have, uh, have fun playing with it. Uh, uh, hopefully uh, it works well for you. And please uh, try doing some extending of it so that we can all benefit off of your hard work as well. Thanks.